Mm. I'm sorry, but what's a glory hole? I asked. Wow. I will cure you. intimate conversation let's get back to the video bring it up what's a glory hole i asked now why does that even come up i bet you ask yourself well let's take a step back way back back in time so matt walsh posted something interesting a few hours ago it says Breaking news, we have obtained internal docs from at Fox News employee. Fox Corp is celebrating pride by encouraging its employees to read about glory holes, supporting a group that gives sterilizing hormones to the homeless youth and deployed woke AI to everyone. It's split content. Now, I'll let you guys read some of this stuff, you know, because Matt Walsh put it out. We'll give him that thing. But I'll tell you two things that caught my eye. Number one. <clears throat> this is one of the people that Fox supports the Los Angeles LGBT uh, community, which you can see back here where it says that, uh, that Fox has been donating to this center right here, support one another. So we're going to support them, huh? The Trevor project in the Los Angeles LGBT center. So let's read a little bit about them. First, we'll start with the Trevor project. Uh, uh, this talks about, you could read this article. The Trevor Project, which says Fox is devoted to helping LGBTQ young people host a sexually explicit chat room that connects children as young as 13 years old. Let's look into this. These are the two couple things that caught me eye. And also, don't forget that. Oh, never mind. If you live in Colorado, if. All right. I have been looking for a binder but i have no clue where to get one does anyone know where i can find a reliable binder a gender confused adolescent ask trevor space the anonymous online forum for lgbt youth the well-funded and influential trevor project host an adult user replied with a list of brands that sells binders which are devices worn under the clothes to conceal female breasts adding i really recommend trans tape if it's your first time i started with tomboy x compression tops C 
See, now if this was another somebody talking to a young kid about what they need to do to cover their breasts, it's just a regular old everyday thing, right? Let's continue. <clears throat> this is a startling scene. Rachel, a Brooklyn mom with a gender dysphoric child, discovered when she undercover, when she went undercover as a preteen in the chat. Searching for resources for detransitioners. She found none. Instead, she opened a Pandora's box of sexually perverse content, aggressive gender assignment referrals, adults encouraging minors to hide their transitions from their parents, and many troubled kids in need of psycholog psychological counseling. She shared screenshots with the National Review. This is one of the people that Fox... Fox News says that we need to tell that its employees needs to support this project. Let's continue on. We'll move on to the next subject. Rachel says she, she looked to the Trevor Project in desperation when I thought my child was going to kill herself. The organization frequently claims the LGBTQ, I mean the LGBT youth are more than four times likely to commit suicide. Uh, uh, sorry, attempt suicide than their peers. It is called... This call is a refuge for these crisis services, including the Trevor Lifeline, Trevor Text, and Trevor Chat, under the advice of a highly credentialed medical and mental health team. Continue on the go. They were at their wits end until a spat sat down and presented her with the PowerPoint showing statistics that people who are transitioned by a huge factor are much, much more likely than the general public to commit suicide. My jaw hit the floor. Oh, my God. We've been lied to. <laughs> Always lying to us, huh? Every chance they get. Look at you. <clears throat> when people signed up for the Trevor space, they have an option of placing themselves with the age races of under 18, 18 to 25. The community uh, is open to people 13 to 24. According to the site, there is no system in place to confirm a person's age. Rebecca says in Natural Review Comparing, she noticed entry from people claiming to be over 25 too, as well as guest comments, I mean guest accounts, with no age listed. Other teens, presumably girls transitioning to boys, testify the effectiveness of minocazadil, an over-the-counter medication that stimulates facial hair growth. Can I get and use Mexico without my parents knowing a girl asks? The kids, the kids Rachel followed on Trevor Space spanned a diverse spectrum of gender disorientation, some confident in their belief that they are the opposite sex, and some just gender curious. But as Rachel observed, they were all pointing in one direction. Gender transition. In a significant number of cases, adults gave minors this validation. I still feel more mask and more femme on days, but it doesn't matter what I'm feeling. I will always prefer to be a girl. When you wrote, does that make me trans or am I still gender fluid? Help, I don't know. An adult replied, if I had to guess, based on your post, I say it sounds pretty trans. This is what we've talked about. And you can read the rest of the article yourself because we got more to talk about. <clears throat> this is what this that was one of the people that they say that we should support okay fox is wanting their employees to um donate to these people and then you have the los angeles lgbt center which fox calls unstoppable has posted a video of a mother surprising her daughter with the ch uh, child's first dose of homo youtube removed the footage um for terms of service violations but a screenshot is still on twitter this is back in 2015 and uh, YouTube wants us to, not YouTube, Fox wants to move this on to their employees. But here's, here's let's get to the most best thing about this, baby. So, this is one of the books. So, let, let's let have Matt explain it to us. Let's scroll a bit more. Fox Employee Portal. Employees are also encouraged to expand their perspective by reading books by trans activists, including a memoir titled, Ferris about a precocious boy who would grow up to become a woman. Well, let's see what some of this thing may contain. This book contains that's obviously more important than um, Fox for Fox employees as they go about their duties at work. For example, an early scene of what a glory hole is. So Fox is encouraging their employees to read a book about this. Let's see one of the parts it says. I am sorry. But what's a glory hole, I asked. 
The chuckles in the room aimed themselves at me. Gavin leaned forward so I could see him. In, a, in the half second before he spoke, I noticed that he was beautiful. A glory hole is an opening drilled into the side of a restroom stall. He said like he was reading a book out of, like he was reading out of a dictionary. You slide your, bloop. You slide your man parts. You slide your, your rooster, if I may say, through, uh, through in someone on the other side, gives you head. Am I, uh, am I reading a book about gay people or is this a porno, porno book? Come on now. What is this? <laughs> what is this? This looks like a porn book to me. And that's the problem we have when we come to this kind of stuff. It's like, it feels like whenever somebody says they want to push, you know, when we, we had those people, um, not too long ago who were giving books out to kids and they said that they just wanted to teach kids about being trans and the whole book had sex in it. The book began with the book towards the very beginning talked about a girl taking her fingers and messing with herself in the most graphic way you could think of. Think of the most graphic way I could have said that in the book explained it that way. It was supposed to be teaching kids about open being open in the book starts pretty much with a girl playing with herself a little girl what the heck let me calm down let me calm down every time they say that they want to do this stuff for pride what they really mean is they just want to do this for sex you know why all they do is lie Okay, so let's see another book that they were talking about. The Fox endorsed a book that also needs to uh, author the graphic description of having a rooster in his mouth. I got out of the shower, took uh, took another towel to dry off, and then tried to replace, and then found a receptacle for my old one. I patted the, over the toilet in the sink area, put the old towel in the bin, and looked in the mirror to find Danny behind me. I turned around, and he took my hand, pulled me into the bathroom stall leaned me against one wall as we kissed and i found myself licking his neck his check his chest his nipples with a repulsionist uh i didn't know was in me while he put his hand on my flank and firmly guided my body his rooster if i may say was in my mouth Un unleashed a desire in me I didn't think existed. You know, I just want to stop on that. I didn't think existed. It is just what we've been trying to explain. We're going to read more. We're going to read more. But what we're trying to explain is when every time you hear these kind of books and every time they talk about pride and they talk about having sex, what they always talk about is how much they had inside of them and they feel so unrepressed. They always feel like... Oh, one second, guys. Uh, it's always about unleashing this one part of yourself and becoming free. Um, let me um, look up this word for y'all. How do you get spelled it again? So we can get kind of a a good feeling. Of it. Okay, it's it's <laughs> excessively grasping or covetous, living on prey ravenous that's what i pretty much thought it was meaning yeah gluttony greed greediness rapacity whatever that's what i was thinking you feeling kind of just like a monster that's what they always make these uh porn things that seem to be especially in these stories when they talk about anybody having sex it's always something that's deep inside of you some kind of beast that needs to be awakened and some people think that's so cool do you ever find it funny that you always talk about sex as if it's a monstrous thing like i let the beast be unleashed that's weird isn't it right don't you think there's a problem with that let's continue I didn't know it was in me. While he put his hand on my flank, he firmly got at his rooster in my mouth, unleashed a desire in me I didn't think existed. I want that rose from his casual, effortless masculinity. I stopped him when he moved my rooster and asked him to kiss me while I jerked myself off until I climax. I didn't know why I didn't want to see his mouth on that body part, but I didn't. There was something about it that would ruin the moment. Hmm. 
<clears throat> Another book that Fa uh, Fox Lee Chips encourages the book uh, people to read was Red, White, and Royal Blue. It's about a fictional gay relationship between Prince Wales and the president's son. It contains a dialogue saying, you know, America is uh, genocidal empire, right? Is this your TED Talk, June ask? You do realize America is a genocidal empire, right? And of course, you know where this book goes. Matt Walsh always says it. It also gets sexual because it always has to be about sex. See, the people, what people have done with the LGBT, when it has just started with a, a few colors representing a few things, even though pink was one of the colors in the original rainbow and it represented sex, so it's always been a sexual thing, but to some degree, but I digress. It always seems now when people want to talk about LGBT, just like we see in the Pride Parade, it always becomes sexual. Do we not see that? Can we not see that and do some talking? Right. So eventually this book gets graphic. Henry gets a grip on Alex's hip and pulls him close. So Alex is properly straddling in his lap. He kisses hard now, more like he had in the red room with teeth. <clears throat> It shouldn't work so perfectly. It doesn't make it makes absolutely no sense, but it does. There's something about the two of them, the way they ignite at different temperatures. Alex's frantic energy and Henry's uh, uh, aging, I can't even say that. aging sureness. He grinds down into Henry's lap, grunting as he's met with Henry already half. Oh my goodness, half hard under him, and Henry curses in response. Is buried. Okay. And Henry's curse in response is buried in Alex's mouth. The kisses turn messy, then urgent and graceless. And Alex gets lost into the drag and slide and press into Henry's lip, the sweet liquor of it. He pushes his hands into Henry's hair and it is soft as it always imagined. When he uh, had the trace of the photo of Henry's in June's magazine, lush and thick under his fingers. Henry melts at the touch of his arms wrapping around Alex's waist and holds it there. Alex isn't going anywhere. He kisses Henry until he feels like he can't breathe, until it feels like he's going to forget both their names and titles until they're only two people tangled up in a dark room. Right? Like, why does that book need to be like if we were t if I was telling you, hey, guys, we need to start reading some more books so we can be open. We're going to get to the part where it talks about kids here, too. Um, why do we need to um, we need to open our mind more? OK, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to encourage you guys to read this book. And if as soon as you guys open the book, the book is about kissing in tongue and mouth. Oh, wait a minute. I thought we were just I thought I thought I thought we were just trying to learn a little bit more about the culture. I didn't, I didn't know we, I was going to read about kissing. Oh, by the way, we also need you to learn what it means to go through the back door. And we need you to learn about the back door. I need you to learn about reverse cowgirl. I need to. I need you to learn about. Uh, <laughs> I need you to learn about uh, what a brothel is. Okay, and I need you to go into great details about it. Okay, in fact, in this book, it's, it's going to mention putting your rooster in her back door. Right. That's that's what we want you guys to read about. Okay, and then at the end, I want you to imagine yourself having your rooster in her mouth. And finishing that will teach you about how important women are to society that doesn't sound stupid it's just like well how's that supposed to like what did that got to do with women being important me putting my rooster in her mouth what's that got to do with me going to the back door and reverse cowgirl in this girl what did they got to do with this shut your mouth and do what we say continuing <sighs> They, Fox leadership doesn't just pick out bugs for its um, uh, uh, its adult employees. They also just a proud rainbow filled kids book with a character who comes out as a unicorn, presumably similar to he's coming out as gay or transgender. I heard a good thing the other day too. <clears throat> when it talks about what they try to get people to do is when somebody comes out as gay, they try to pe put people who aren't gay back in the closet. So people come out of the closet and then they say, you must do what I say or get put in the closet, right? You will shut your mouth and not say anything about what I choose to do. If I come out and say, I'm gay, if I come out and say, I'm trans, you shut your mouth, get in that closet, boy. Don't you, don't you, don't do no, I don't want to do no talking. What I say is true. Y'all saw my last video where that girl came out and said, I just want to let you guys know. No, I got to do it like she did. I just want to let you guys know that, uh, I'm a guy! 
And then everybody claps, claps, claps. And they're like, woo! The 10 people that are probably standing out there, really, it sounded like five people. Like, what do you expect? Like, like if you went to... <laughs> If you went to a restaurant right now, went into McDonald's, walked in and go, everybody, I just want to let you know, I've came out to a few people, but I'm a woman. You think everybody's going to be like, they're going to say, sir, either get out, okay, or order something. I don't care what you are. Because you know what? I got, when I get off here. I got to go pay bills. I got to figure out how I'm going to get to my next paycheck. I got my kids to take care of. You want to walk in here and tell me you're a woman, you expect me to clap? Sir, I'm at work, working my nine to five, trying to put food on the table. And you're going to come in here and tell me you're a woman? And I'm supposed to clap for that? There's a lot of women in the world, baby. What makes you different? Nothing, except for you're not actually one. <laughs> because back in the day, if somebody had did that, if we had did this 15 years ago, somebody walked into the room and said, I just want to let everybody know, I'm a guy. We would just looked at him like, how do you need help? Nah, <laughs> in all honesty, we would have did some talking. We'd have been like, okay. And we'd have said, well, and then we would have sat them down and had a few conversations. And maybe they go to a therapist. Maybe we have an actual talk. We don't just go, of course you are. Now you can go into whatever bathroom you want. Good luck. We did some talking You know why Because we used to care about people But now the more we have become a part of the society The more we don't really give a F what people did Now thank God We are starting to come back and be like Wait a minute you want to pull the kids in And now we going back to having a conversation Let's finish this off So they brought in a new AI. Fox leadership told employees to sign up for this. Oh, hold on. Let me go back. Not. Elsewhere, Fox's employee portal, workers are encouraged to attend a Ben and Jerry, Jerry's powered pride event. And then it goes on to say, not all Fox employees are happy with this propaganda. That might be why last year Fox experimented with a solution to monitor employees. Uh, commitment to the DEI. It's an. AI platform called a Scalera, Escalera, Escalera, which tracks employees' commitment to the cult of DEI. And DEI, from what I can understand, is diversity and inclusion. So pretty much these employees, they have to be very careful when they get on their place because they're going to test, see how diverse you're being, how inclusive you're being. And if you're not moving right, boy, they're going to put you back in that closet. The closet they came out of, they're going to put you right back in, close the door, lock the key. I mean, <laughs> lock the door, throw away the key. You need to listen to putting roosters in mouth. You need to listen to kids getting hormone therapy. You need to listen to people who are over, way over the age, talking to minors about how to transition. You just need to shut your mouth and mind your business. Because if you don't conform, oh, they're going to find you. And they're going to tell you, you better do what we say. And if you don't believe in pride and you don't believe in the LGBT, don't you worry. I will kill you. That's all it's ever been about. They think we're the messed up ones. They think that we need help. They think we need to be cured. We need to set aside our beliefs. Do we? Do we? Because what I'm seeing, this road is not going down a good path. And people are starting to rise. People are starting to see. Maybe, just maybe, I'm getting effing tired of y'all wanting me to do whatever y'all want me to do. If you're going to cancel me, I don't give an F. If I miss gender, tell cookies. Because I'm tired, man. I'm exhausted. And if I got to wake up one more day, walk into my place of establishment and have to hear somebody tell me, you're going to call me Zizer, I'm going to blow my top. Enough. I want to come to work. I want to click on this keyboard. I want to go home and either chill with my wife and kids 
my husband and kids, or sit there alone, drink my little drinky drink, look at the TV, maybe get lost in some Netflix. I just want to chill. I don't want to dread coming to work worried about rainbows in my face. I don't want to come to work telling me to call them they them. I don't want to have to come to work to argue about who's going to which bathroom. I'm tired of it. I need a break. I'm going to blow my top. And that's where we are. People are just fed up. You, even the new Spider-Man movie. In the top right hand, you can see where it says protect trans kids. It's like, can I do anything without seeing this? Anything. Can I go anywhere in my life and just watch a TV show that was supposed to be meant for kids and Miles and Spider-Man? Can my kids just watch that and just live life? I understand there's always been something in TV shows and cartoons. There's always been some kind of moral to it. But it's like, God dang. At least they were talking about, like, now, Johnny, at least back then they were talking about more like, Johnny, you shouldn't have stole that cookie. That cookie wasn't your cookie to steal. At least we were having those conversations. It wasn't, Johnny, you said you're a boy. And don't let anybody ever tell you different. I know you're only three years old and you wore high heels one time. But that's enough. To, that's, that's enough. I know you wore high heels one time. That's enough to say you're gay. Oh, I know you wore high heels one time, Johnny, and that means you're a girl. I, that is just so ridiculous. I hate that what we do to kids. When we tell a kid, just because a kid wore high heels when he was three years old, that obviously meant he was gay. Meaning that gay equals feminine. Means gay equals wearing heels. Gay equals putting on a dress. Gay equals being freaking curious as a kid. You weren't wearing high heels because you thought you were in love with men. You were wearing high heels because you've never seen heels in your life because you're three. You're three years old. You're just now starting to get some kind of cognitive stuff going. You're like, what do these heels do? I'm just a curious. Does it mean, oh, you know what? Now I'm gay. <laughs> like, I don't know. I grew up with the, we all grew up with different sex, right? I grew up with girls, we grew up with boys. There was a lot of boys I knew that had dabbled, maybe worn, seen some slip, lipstick and met, put it all over their face. Somebody who's seen heels and maybe put it on, maybe saw a dress and thought it was, what the heck is this? You know, all of us boys grew up to be, almost all of my friends who have experimented in this way or fashion have gone on to be normal, everyday straight men who are married. So that doesn't mean back then because I wore high heels one time that that meant that I was struggling with my identity. I don't even know my race, let alone know what the F I am. You meet so many kids that you rarely ever meet a kid that's just blatantly racist to be racist for no reason because that's taught, right? But when I was young, I didn't know I was black until somebody told me I was black. You know what I mean? I was just living life as a black kid. So let alone not even knowing that I was black... I didn't know I was really, I, I knew it was a boy. I knew it was different from somebody else, but I didn't put in my head like, oh man, I, am, I, am I a boy? Am I a girl? I don't know. If I can't figure it out, I'm just going to pop my top. I don't know. I'm all for protecting the kids. But we got to stop trying to manipulate people. It sucks for the people who are trying to work at Fox and just want to live their lives. But they got to read about glory holes. And the people get so mad when we're like, man, the LGBT is kind of sexual. And I'm sorry for the people who aren't in the LGBT, the LGBT who aren't sexual like this and aren't trying to sexualize themselves. But y'all got to speak louder because you're, you're unheard. Start speaking up against this. And I, some people are, to be fair. Obviously, people are speaking up about this. But... Man, we got to see some change because the route we're going, people are going to hate LGBT. They're not going to want to hear about them. They're not going to want to hear their mouths and all this freedom that they fought for to at least be heard. The problem of what happened, I'll shut up after this. What actually happened was before we were willing to listen to the LGBT, we were like, okay, let's sit down. Let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. But what happened was eventually the LGBT just said, you know what? I don't want to do no more talking. When we, when they say us people, us people who are against them, we're willing to have a conversation and say, okay, well, let, let's, let's see what, when we were at least willing to do that, they're not even willing to talk to us no more. 
when we opened the door and said, okay, come on, sit at the table. They said, F that, flip the table and said, don't you ever sit at this table again. And if you do, we're going to come for you. And now, now that we're at the table, I want you to bring little Susie and little Tommy. Bring them to the table. And we're going to tell them if they're gay or not. I know they're only five and six. But we're going to tell little Johnny and Susan if they're gay or not. And one last thing I want to say. To you goofballs who keep saying that you knew a person was gay because they acted feminine when they were seven, shame on you. You're disgusting. I'm so sick of people when they see a little boy act somewhat feminine and he's only he's young boy. They immediately go, huh, he's probably gay. Don't you effing even speak that into the world. You don't talk to him about that. You don't do anything about that because you're going to be the person who's going to click them over to that situation. Just because there, there are, you know, there are, there are feminine straight men out there. There are, there are men who are feminine who are not gay. Okay. So quit pushing gay to femininity, right? Because that's why you get flamboyant gay people, people who are like over the top, right? And that's supposed to represent gay. And that's what being gay means, which is how we got pushed so far into this sexuality that we got now. Because what y'all took with somebody who said that they they may um, have attraction to the same sex, y'all took that and twisted it into this this clownish version of what we've done to women. Because when you think about a gay person now, you think a lot of people think about a flamboyant gay person, somebody who likes to wear pink, somebody who um, is, hey, boo, how you doing today? Mm, girl, okay. Very uh, character of females, because I don't even know a lot of females that act like what we portray gay people to be these days. We've taken that and twisted it to this real feminine role. So when any time we see a little boy who is just somewhat more feminine than what we would consider masculine, he's not a boy who may go out and play in the mud or a boy who likes to ride trucks. He may be a boy who likes to garden. OK, he may have more feminine, more feminine mannerisms because he grew up around. Uh, women or he grew up around with a mother who was very loving and his father wasn't he just grew up with more feminine nature that doesn't mean he's gay we all grow up different ways okay my father wasn't very loving my father was a great man he took care of my family or, or took care of his family but he wasn't a loving father we didn't go out and play football in the yard so yeah I was closer. I, I hung out with more women growing up. So there were some things about me that would seem feminine. But you know one thing my father never did? My father never called me gay. He never called me gay. He would question some things. Like when he saw me playing with Barbie dolls, even though I wasn't playing with Barbie dolls because I was gay, I played with Barbie dolls because they were action figures to me. A woman doll and a man doll, I thought, well... I see my mom and dad are married, so I'm guessing these two can be married. I just made a family out of it. You know what I mean? So my father would question that sometimes. That's whatever. But my father never went either to so far to say, don't you dare be gay. But my father was willing to have the conversation, even though at no point was I ever gay. At no point was I attracted to men or boys or anything. My father never pushed it on me, and my mom never did either. My mom never said, oh, he's gay. He must be gay. And then just keep calling me gay until everybody's calling me gay. And then I have to question if I'm gay or not. Don't do that to little boys. And you know what? I don't even talk about boys. Like, even if I meet a very feminine boy, right? A very feminine boy. Because y'all know I've worked with kids vast, over half my life. I see feminine kids, but I never, and you'll never hear me go, oh, that boy must be gay. I don't do that to people. I don't do that to children. I leave children when it comes to sexuality. I don't even have a conversation about that. I'm not saying they're gay. I don't care. If I see a little girl dressing like a boy, acting like a boy, don't you will not hear the words come out of my mouth that she's gay. Nope. Girls can be tomboys. Why can't guys be somewhat of a version of that where they're just more feminine? It's cool, man. It, everybody grows up different. Not all of us are going to grow up playing football. Some of us are going to grow up and like to cook. Some of us are going to grow up to like the garden. Some of us are going to hang out with a lot of girls. Doesn't mean we're gay. Okay about this stuff and fox news you pushing this agenda on people is disgusting i don't know what you're trying to get at but i'll never understand it <sighs>
Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Thank you for watching this. If you're watching this live, if you're watching this on YouTube later, thank you for watching. Once again, I want to explain. I'm not against the LGBT. I'm not against all that. But I am against what companies make the LGBT to be. A very sexual, deviant thing. And I'm disgusted. Absolutely disgusted.